Special thanks to Patreon supporter Owen Bross for making this tutorial possible. Hello ladies and gentlemen, Scare204 here bringing you another Minecraft World War II vehicle tutorial. In this tutorial we'll be going ahead and doing a redesign for the Panzerkampfwagen E100. The E100 was a German super heavy tank design developed toward the end of World War II. The largest of the E-series of tank designs intend to improve German armored vehicle production through standardization on cheaper and simpler to build vehicles. By the end of the war, the chassis of the prototype E-100 uh, had been partially completed. It was shipped to the United Kingdom for trials but was later scrapped. The basic design was ordered by the Waffenet as a parallel development to the Porsche Moss in June of 1943. It was the heaviest of the E-series of vehicles, meant to standardize as many components as possible in the 100 ton weight class. Other designs were the E10, E25, E50, and E75. In March 1944, the Adler Company in Frankfurt submitted blueprints for a super heavy tank called the E100. After the tank was proposed in April of 1943, along with other E-series vehicles, according to blueprints, the tank would be armed with a, both a 150mm gun and a 75mm gun. Two types of engines were proposed. One was the 700 horsepower Maybach HL 230 with a transmission and turning mechanism borrowed from the Tiger II. The estimated top speed was 23 km per hour or roughly 14 miles per hour. The second variant would have been a 1200 horsepower Maybach engine with a top speed estimated at 40 km per hour uh, or 25 miles per hour. The design had uh, removable sides, skirts, and narrow transport tracks to make rail transport more viable. The design was also very similar to the original Tiger Moss proposal but had larger 900mm diameter road wheels, and a new coil spring base suspension, rather than the original torsion bars. A new turret was designed intended to be simpler and lighter than the Moss turret, but many sources also suggest that a Moss turret could be mounted. In July 1944, Hitler ordered the development of the super heavy tanks to stop. Work on the E100 continued at a very low priority, with only three Adler employees available to assemble the prototype. The first prototype was never fully completed and was found by the 751st Field Artillery Battalion of the American Forces in April 1945. The partially completed vehicle was taken to the British Army for evaluation and scrapped in the 1950s. So yeah, the E100 here, definitely a very uh, interesting tank. Again, part of those super heavy tanks that German kind of um, imagined would change the course of the war. Uh, obviously, these vehicles were never able to be fielded. Um, however, their impact is very debatable, but to me, I think would have been uh, very minuscule uh, compared to how the war was going. But uh, overall, really interesting tank. It's just kind of a fun one to take a look at and to uh, kind of build and, you know, have kind of as a alternate, you know, what could have been a um, pretty heavy tank of um, World War II Germany. Before we go ahead and dive in and take a look at this build, I do want to go ahead and give a special thanks to Patreon supporter Owen Bross for making this tutorial possible. If you guys are interested in supporting the channel more you already do, feel free to check out my Patreon page. Link is always in my video descriptions where you can go and pledge a small amount to the channel every month and in doing so earn a few requests you're choosing. It really helps support the work I do on my channel. It's really greatly appreciated. So again, definitely feel free to check that out. Link will be down in the video description. With that though, let's go and dive in here and take a look here at the Panzerkampfwagen E100. Now this version I have in front of me here is in green. Um, I was planning on doing a camo scheme, kind of I've done similar with like the Tigers with the green, brown, and um, tan. Um, however, I'm probably going to, in this tutorial, just going to go ahead and do it in a gray color scheme since it is kind of a prototype or experimental tank. We don't really know what color scheme it would have gone with, but most likely since it was a late war vehicle, it probably would have been uh, standardly built in that tan color um, and then obviously modified from there on out. Uh, but basically, going ahead and start, we have the front here of the vehicle. As you can see, it's definitely a lot wider than our typical heavy tanks. Uh, this is a heavy tank, so it is uh, definitely a lot wider. It uh, has a wider track base and just overall just a behemoth. Um, the road wheels here, you can see again, are basically what we use for standard wheels. So these things are uh, pretty chunky. And then we have obviously the uh, side skirts mounted on this vehicle as well, just because I think the side skirts kind of make the E100 look like the E100, I guess. Um, up here we have the main 150mm gun, equipped with the 75mm to the side here, and then also a machine gun mounted in the turret as well. We have all the different uh, hatches and different viewports and stuff like that up here for the top of the turret, and obviously the turret itself. And then the back of the vehicle here, we have just the engine kind of uh, top bay there and 
really nothing too fancy for it. So um, overall, that's pretty much the E100. It's a pretty simple build. Um, again, this is something that's kind of more guesstimated on what it would have looked like. Uh, we have some prototypes that were, where we have the one chassis that was recovered, but after that, in terms of the actual rest of the build, or the turret is kind of just up to interpretation. So uh, I think it came out pretty good and should be a nice redesign for the E100. And hope you guys can put into kind of your um, alternate World War II um, you know, maps or something you got going on. But uh, anyways though, let's go ahead and move into the tutorial by beginning with our first layer, layer number one. All right guys, so let's go ahead and get started with our first layer here. For our first layer to go ahead and get started with, you were to place down a row of one, two, and three of narrow brick slabs. We're gonna go then place down three narrow brick top slabs coming off those slabs going toward the direction you want of the front of the tank facing. This way here is gonna be the front of our tank, so we're gonna place down our narrow brick slabs like that. After we have that done, we wanna go ahead and then go back from this. We're gonna go ahead and place down uh, basically rows of narrow brick in the ground. This could be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, and 14 narrow brick blocks back. We're going to go ahead and do two more rows like this. Basically going back on each one of those narrow brick slabs. Put this all the way down to the sides here for our track to sit on. Now once we get to this point on the end here, we're going to go ahead and then place down again 1, 2, 3 narrow brick slabs. And then again 3 narrow brick top slabs like so. At this point here, we're going to go and start laying out our tracks. We're going to go ahead and begin with by placing down one and two dark oak trapdoors here. And then we're going to place down two back-to-back -back polished stainless slide upside down stairs. And we're going to place down another set right behind those. After we have that done, we want to go ahead and then place down two polished stainless slide upside down stairs here. So we're going to have one like this, one here, like so. And then after that, we're going to go ahead and then place down two dark oak trapdoors here. And then we're going to take our polished stainless slide again. We're going to place down one and two upside down stairs so like so and then we're going to go behind these two stairs and place down two more like that we're going to then place down a dark oak wood trap door now for that uh, we want to go and then place down a set of two of polished anisite stairs back to back coming off that narrow brick slab there and then after we have that all done we're going to go and take our dark oak wood trap doors and we're just going to place down a row like that on the back here now uh, once we have that done actually one thing we we're going to do here, we're going to go and change up something real quick here. Uh, this back row, we're just going to take stone top slabs and we're just going to take, we're just going to place down our stone top slabs all the way across here. So, we'll just go ahead and do that, um, kind of make the tracks a little bit more neater, I guess. So, we're just going to place our stone top slab and we'll just run this row all the way back to this point here. So, we'll just go ahead and do that. And then after we have that done, we're going to go ahead and then grab our polished andesite stairs. We're going to place down one upside down stair here one here and then two dark oak trap doors and then again we're going to place down two dark oak trap doors here and then another polished dance side up sound stair like that in this space here we're going to place down two more polished dance side up sound stairs followed by a dark oak trap door and again two polished dance side up sound stairs like that back to back and again a dark oak trap door in this space here so basically this right here is what you should have for your track layout um it can be a little bit uh weird uh, to, to look at that's for sure but it's just kind of part of the design process and how the wheels are actually spaced out so again yeah this is what we should have for the top down view for the left side of the tracks now once that's done we're going to go ahead and take our stone slabs here and we want to go ahead and begin with by going ahead and placing down a row of three over so one two three and going to the back here we're going to go to the nether brick slabs here and place down a row of three across as well we then want to connect our rows of stone so we're just going to go ahead and connect our rows of three all the way across this down the center to basically fill in the bottom here of the vehicle. So just like that. After that's all done, we're going to go ahead and then basically do the same track design that we did over on the left side, just over here to the right side. So I'm going to go ahead and kind of build this a little bit quicker as I've already covered the other side um, all together. But yeah, just know that both sides are going to be exactly the same here for the track system. So what, again, whatever we do on the other side will be done over here to this side. So we're going to run our stone top slabs across this space like so. And we're going to go ahead and then place down our nerve brick blocks. Here the and with that done, we'll go ahead and start moving on to our wheels.
So just like that, we have our wheel spacing done, and then we're just gonna place down our dark trap trapdoors on top of each one of these dark or these narrow brick blocks like so to go ahead and kind of create a little bit more level there to the tracks. And with that all done, that right there is pretty much um, it for that. That's really all we have there. We're gonna take a look at it from the top down view, and this is what we should have for the top down view there for the tracks. Um, but yeah, that right there is going to pretty much wrap up what we have there for layer number one. And with that, we'll go ahead and jump into our next layer, layer number two. All right, guys, moving into our next layer, we have layer number two. For layer two, to go ahead and get started, if you were to take our polished dance site, we're gonna place down two upside down stairs like this, and then also two right behind those. We're gonna go ahead and go over to this side, and we're gonna do basically the exact same thing. So just like this, two both sides there. Now, after we have that done, we're gonna go then place down a stone block like this to both sides, and we're gonna go then place down a grindstone coming off that stone block like so. Actually, my bad, it's actually gonna be a row of five of stone blocks across and then instead of placing those grindstones here we're actually going to place down our stone block and then we're going to go then place down a grindstone which will be um, actually coming off the block above it so we'll kind of just do something like this and we want the grindstone kind of coming down like that now you can place the grindstone just coming off the stone block to the side there if you want it doesn't really change the build too much but uh, for our design and purposes we're just going to go and place down the grindstones like so in the space in between these stone blocks, we are going to place down a row of three of stone top slabs, and we want to go ahead and then wrap this front off with narrow brick walls, one, two, across, and one, two, like that, across for the front tracks. With that all done, we're going to go then go to our polished and side stairs here. Um, these basically upside down stairs, and we're just going to place down stairs on top of the upside down ones. So these stairs here are going to be back to back, basically making the wheel design here, like so. And that'll be done like that, and we're going to go ahead and do the same thing over here on this side. So just like that, and we have our wheels um, complete. Now we're gonna go then take stone, and we want to fill the inside in here with stone. So uh, we're just gonna basically fill in the entire inside here with stone uh, full blocks that will basically close off the caps that are left by the wheels looking in the side of the vehicle. There is uh, room in here if you do want to do an interior for the build. However, we will not be doing an interior in this uh, tutorial, so just keep that in mind. Um, you will have to make your own interior if you are playing on that. Now, once we get to this point and we're in line with our last stair here, we're going to go ahead and then place down an additional row of five, and then we're going to place down one more row of five of stone going all the way across the back here like so. At this point here, we're going to take our polished dance site, we're going to place down two upside down stairs here, two like this, and over here, same thing, two upside down stairs, two upside down stairs for our back sprocket wheel. We're going to go then take our nether brick walls, and we're going to place down a row of one, two, three, and one, two, three across. In the space in the middle here, we're going to place down three stone blocks between the nether brick walls. We then want to go ahead and grab ourselves a trip bar hook. We're going to place down a trip bar hook on these two stone blocks. And very similar to what we did in the front, we're going to place down a grindstone, which will be coming down from these blocks up above here. And again, the grindstone might need to be kind of messed with to uh, get to sit properly. And if you're not on Java, you may not be able to have this work properly. So just keep that in mind um, as you kind of proceed further with this. Uh, but right, right there is going to basically complete the main structure here for this layer. We are going to be doing some techniques here with the banners just to kind of improve the look here of these wheels. Not something completely necessary, but just a nice way to kind of spruce up the wheels a little bit more. Anyway, so I'm going to go ahead and grab those necessary materials, and I'll see you guys here shortly to make those banners. Alright guys, so when it comes to making the banners here for our wheels, they're just kind of out of a nice little bit of detail, and you can see here that, um kind of went ahead and spruced up the banner and created like a little bit more of a unique design for it but it's a really nice way just to kind of add a little bit more detail to your tracks um and so to make them pretty simple we're going to need two light gray banners four light gray dye two black dye and one gray dye we're going to go and go into our loom for our light gray banners and we're going to place down our black dye for the, both these banners we're going to go ahead and do the black border around the entire perimeter of the banner we're going to go ahead and place down our gray dye into loom and then our first light gray banner. This banner here, we are going to go ahead and uh, do the line on the left side vertically with our dark gray. And then we're going to go ahead and then do the other banner, this time with the right side line uh, going vertically like that on the right side. Both these banners uh, basically will look like this. So you have these two banners here. You're going to go ahead and place your light gray into loom and then our first banner here with the dark gray line on the right side. We want to go and then select the corners here. They're going to be corresponding with, with this gray line. So the gray line's on the right side, so we're going to select the bottom right corner. And then we want to go and then select the top right corner. And you get a banner that looks like this. Same thing will be done for this one here. This will be a uh, square here in the bottom left corner. And then a square in the top left hand corner. 
and you get these two banners that look like this. Now to place these banners, super simple, we're going to go ahead and go to the sides of the stairs and we're just going to place down our banners like this. And you do get this spot where you have half the wheel, so you just want to go ahead and go to the side here um, that the wheel would be. So it would kind of look like that right there, and then you would have this banner that would be right there, but obviously the stairs in the way so we can't place it. Then you're just going to go and do this here for all of our full stairs, obviously. Same thing right here. We only have the right side of the stair of this wheel showing, so we're just going to place down the right side banner and then these banners here. So again, we have the gray, that dark gray facing toward each other like so, and that just adds again a lot more detail there to our wheels. Kind of has that little black line around the outside there, which is kind of more of like the, um, you know, rubber or something like that on the tracks, uh, pretty common um, on tanks. And... We'll just go ahead and do the same thing, same kind of pattern, going all the way down the side here like that, on this side as well. Now you will not need these banners for the rest of the build, so um, you can go ahead and discard them as uh, needed. But yeah, that's right there is basically what you want on the side of the tank, and you can see it just adds a really nice bit of detail. It just kind of adds that nice, uh, you know, detail we're trying to go for from the tank. Anyways, though, that's going to do it for that. Uh, we'll go ahead and um, move on to our next layer, layer number three. All right, guys. So moving into our next layer here, we have layer number. Three. For layer 3 to get started with here, we're going to go and place down a DLH detector on top of these narrow brick walls here in the corner, and we're going to go and turn that to the night mode like so. We're going to go and then take our stone slabs, and we're just going to place down a row of stone slabs all the way across between those daylight detectors. After that, uh, we want to go and then place down a stone slab going back from the daylight detectors to both sides, and we're going to go and then place down a skeleton skull coming off the side there of the slab. We then want to take our pistons and just place down a row of pistons going all the way across here. And we're going to go ahead and leave that as, for, as is for right now. We're going to come back to that a little bit later. If you're on a different version um, that does not have uh, the debug stick, which is the tool we'll be using throughout this build. Um, so basically anything other than Java ver edition, you'll probably have to find an alternative for this block. This can be substituted for um, the endstone portal frames, but the color is a little weird. So you may want to go ahead and just go with some stone stairs here instead um, of these um, pistons. But again, that's kind of up to you guys and what you want to do, do proceeding further for the build. Um, anyways, though, at this point, though, we're going to go and take our stone blocks. We're going to go ahead and place down a row of stone blocks across. So this right here is just going to be a row um, of stone going all the way across. So a nice row of nine there. And then after that, we're just going to take our stone blocks and run them all the way along the side here. So we're going to go ahead and go back from this one. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen. And uh, we're going to go ahead and stop at 18 blocks, so ending on top of that narrow brick wall there. Then we just want to take our stone blocks and go across. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, so a total of 9. And we're just going to do the same thing, row of stone on this side. So this is just going to go all the way back, like so. At this point in time, you can go and then fill the whole inside in of the vehicle like so. Again, um, you do have a lot of space for interior, um, so there is a lot of playability with the build. So basically all the space you can see in here is all basically available as interior space. Um, so there is a lot of room to be had. Um, but for our tutorial here and um, sake of the build, we'll just go ahead and completely fill this in like so. Especially if you're a survival player, you do not want mobs spawning in here or anything like that. So best just to fill it in um, and close this all off like so. Now, once we have that all done, we're going to go ahead and go to the sides of the build. We're going to take like gray stainless panes, and we're just going to place down like gray stainless panes all the way along the side here. So this is just going to go all the way along the side of the build. And same thing over here. Light gray stainless panes going all the way along the side here. After that's all done, uh, going to the back here, we're going to go ahead and then take our glass panes. We're going to place down a row of one, two, three, four. And over here, same thing, one, two, three, four. In this section here, we're going to place down a stone brick block to both sides there. And we then want to go ahead and place down a gray stainless pane, or light gray stainless pane there in the center. And then come off these um, stone brick blocks, we're going to place down a wither skeleton skull like that on both sides. After that's all complete there, that is going to basically wrap up what we have there for that. And at this point in time, for us Java players, we're going to go and type in the command slash give space at p minecraft colon debug underscore stick. So this command right here is the command you want. By pressing enter, it will give you this glowing stick. By going ahead and going up to these pistons, we'll left click the piston until we get selected extended and it should say false in parentheses. We'll right click each one of these pistons and it should say extended to true. And as you can see, it gets rid of that um, wood portion on top of it and just kind of helps us with the sloping there of the front armor. 
Um, so again, a really nice technique to use. Just know that if you do place a block or break a block around these pistons, they will revert back to their normal state. So just make sure that you go ahead and re-adjust um, them if they do decide to turn back to that, um, having that wood top portion on top. Anyways, though, that is it for layer three. Let's move on to layer number four. Moving into our next layer, we have layer number four. For layer four to get started, if you were to place down a daylight detector here in this corner, turn that to night mode. Same thing with this corner over here. We then want to take our stone slabs, place down a row of seven across, and then we're going to place down one stone slab, going back from the daylight detectors on both sides. We're going to take our pistons, same thing we did for the previous layer, we're just going to place down a row of pistons across, or again, substitute those out for stone stairs. We're going to then go back from the pistons and place down a row of stone blocks, going all the way across, and then a piston here to the side, like so. At this point in time, coming off this um, stone uh, block here, we're going to place down a skeleton skull like that to the side. And then after that, uh, we want to go and then grab ourselves some smooth stone, so smooth stone slabs here. And we're going to go and then place down a row of three coming from the center. So we have our center here, stone block to both sides of that center one, and then a smooth sandstone block like that to the sides there. We then want to go ahead and grab an item frame. We're going to place down an item frame here on top of those blocks, and we can just place down a stone block in those item frames like so. Um, after that's all done, we want to go and then place down another stone block, come off the side here, like that to both sides, and then again a piston to both sides. Now along the sides of the build here, we're going to go and then place down an additional piston. That will be right here, followed by a skeleton skull. Uh, we also want to go ahead and go after the skeleton skull. We're going to place down another piston. This one's going to have a stone bun on the side here, followed by another piston, and then a skeleton skull. We then want to place down one, two, three, four pistons more going back a skeleton skull on the side of the fourth one an air piston a stone button a piston and a skeleton skull we're going to go and then place down one two three um pistons a fourth piston skeleton skull and then one more piston here on the very end same thing is going to be done over here so we have one two three four skeleton skull piston stone button piston skeleton skull one, two, three, four pistons, then a uh, skeleton skull, actually this is going to be moved forward one, so I actually messed up here, it's going to be a skeleton skull here, then a stone button, and then a skeleton skull. So, my bad on that one, it should be like this on the side here, kind of um, jump the gun there a little too early, but then we're going to go ahead and count back one, two, three, and then our fourth piston here, back from that, there's skeleton skull, stone button, skeleton skull, and after this piston here, we're going to go ahead and place down additional one and two and three back skeleton skull and then one piston here on the end now at this point in time we're gonna go then go to the inside here we're gonna take our stone blocks we're gonna place down one two three four five six seven eight and nine and over here one two three four five six seven eight and nine we can go ahead and then fill the inside in here completely with stone again not completely necessary um, but uh, we'll just go ahead and again filled in just for the sake of consistency with the build. So this will get completely filled in like so. Now at this point we want to go ahead and then grab ourselves a um, light gray uh, shulker box. We're going to place down one, two, three, and one, two, three. Same thing over here, one, two, three, one, two, three. Then um, we can go ahead and take our polished anisites. So our full blocks here, we're going to place down uh, first a row of three of stone, and then one, two, three, polished anisite, one, two, three across that space like so. We're going to go ahead and take our stone blocks, place down a row of seven, going all the way across here, and then a second row of seven, going all the way across the build like that. On the very back here, we're going to place down a grindstone, come off these stone blocks here, and we then want to go ahead and grab ourselves some acacia wood fence posts. We're going to place those going up from those wither skeleton skulls, and then on top of those, we're going to place down flower pots, like so, just so we don't forget to do them later. But yeah, should look something like that there on the back. At this point in time, we're going to go ahead and take our debug stick, and we're going to go ahead and basically go to each one of these pistons and just go ahead and right-click them like so to basically set them back to their, or to this state here, which again helps with that design for the build. So it's just going to go all the way along the side here, just like that. And once you have that all done right there, that is going to basically wrap up what we have there for uh, layer number four for the build. And with that, we'll be going ahead and moving on to layer number five. Before we go ahead and move directly into layer five, I do want to go ahead and mention that one thing we're also going to add to the front here is we're going to go ahead and go to the middle um, slab here. 
I'm in the middle of this row of seven. We're gonna place down a uh, dark oak wood fence gate like so. And we're gonna open the fence gate toward the front, place down an item frame on the back of the fence gate, and then we're gonna go and place down a snowball in that item frame like that for the little headlight there on the front of the vehicle. So yeah, pretty simple little addition, and that right there is gonna be like that. Anyways though, after we have that done, we're gonna go ahead and place down a skeleton skull that'll be in f on this uh, stone block like so for kind of like the driver's um, viewport there. And we can also place down one on this side as well uh, for basically the two viewports for um, the uh, operators there of the vehicle. Now once we have that done, we're gonna go and take our stone blocks. We're gonna place down one, two, and three stone blocks across and then three stone top steps coming off those blocks. We then wanna take our stone stairs and um, which I actually need to go ahead and grab some here. Uh, but we're going to go ahead and take stone stairs and we're going to be placing down stone stairs um, on the sides here. So upside down to both sides. Now once we have that done, we're going to go ahead and place down a second stair out to the side there, like so. And we're going to go ahead and take our stone blocks and we're going to place down a row of seven going across. This right here is going to be followed by another row of seven, then a third row, four, five, six, seven, and we're going to stop at seven rows back. We're going to go ahead and take our stone top slabs. We're going to place down one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And then one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. So again, we have uh, basically one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven rows of seven of stone. And then two rows of seven of stone top slabs. At this point in time, we're going to go ahead and take a um, trip bar hook on this side of the stone block. We're place down a trip bar hook. And the same thing will be done here. Now one problem we do have is that it will cause your pistons to reset. So you will need to go back and place down your stone buns here because those will fall off. Uh, so the stone buns there and we will have to reactivate these pistons. So make sure you place the stone buns back on the side there of those blocks first and then place those down like that. And over here we're going to do the same thing here. Um, so just like that and you can see your pistons reset. We'll place down our stone buns again. And again, we'll go back with our debug stick and just go ahead and reset them. So nothing too uh, big. It's just a kind of a minor inconvenience really to um, do. But yeah, just like that. And you have that done on both sides there for the turret. Now at this point, uh, we're going to go then go to the very back of the build here. We're going to take our wither skeleton skulls. And we're going to place down a wither skeleton skull at a 45 degree angle on top of each one of these shulker boxes. So just kind of wrapped around and they kind of form a circular shape there for the top exhaust here. Or not really exhaust, but kind of um, fence over the engine. So that'll be done there on both sides. In the center here, we're going to place down two item frames. And in those item frames, we're going to place down two stone blocks. We then want to go ahead and place down a iron trap door, which will be in the center, like so. And then to the sides of that, we're going to go ahead and place down a skeleton skull, like that. And then we then want to grab polished anisite slabs. And we're going to place down two slabs like this out to the sides. After that, uh, we want to go ahead and place down a stone button on the middle block here and then grabbing our rails we're going to place down a rail right here and also right there we'll go ahead and then grab a dark oak wood fence post as well as an iron bar and we're going to place down a dark oak wood fence post on top of those two stone blocks as well as our radio antennas which will be one two three and four iron bars up and same thing over here one two three and four iron bars up like that again for this radio antenna on the back and with that all done, uh, we basically have layer 5 complete, and with that, we'll be going ahead and moving into our next layer, layer number 6. Alright guys, moving into our next layer, we have layer number 6. For layer 6 to get started with here, we're going to take our stone blocks and place down our row of 3 across those stone top slabs. We then want to place down a stone block here in the center, an anisite wall on the right side, and then a light gray stainless paint over here on the left side. So it's going to look something like that there in the front. Now once we have that done, we're going to go ahead and take our anisite walls, we're going to go off from the stone block. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 eight and nine and the side walls going forward and we then want to place down a polished black stone wall actually sorry it's gonna be seven walls forward and then a polished black stone wall being that eighth one like down the very end there to make your main gun to the right side here come off this wall we're gonna place down one two three dark oak wood trap or dark oak wood fence gates and one thing you can do also for this which is kind of cool on these last two we can left click until we get selected in wall false and just right click this um, by crouching in the air and we can actually set these to kind of go downwards like that and it really helps kind of create the shaping there of our gun makes it a little more nicer now again this is going to be with the debug stick you're going to have that extra feature to be able to make that look just a tiny bit nicer obviously if you're on a different version that does not have a debug stick you're just going to have to settle with kind of how it is with the fence gates this one being a little bit lower and these ones being a little bit higher up so just keep that in mind um, for this main gun you can also use slabs if you want to but i found that the fence gates here are kind of the best um, in this particular instance 
Anyways, though, after that, we're going to then place down a light gray stainless pane, come off the side here of those stone blocks, that row of three, and then come off this glass pane over here on the left side. We're going to place down a chain like this for that coaxial machine gun. After that's all done, we're going to take our stone blocks, we're going to place down a row of five across, and then an anisite wall to both ends. After we have that all done, we want to go ahead and grab a skeleton skull, place it down, come off these walls here, and we're going to go ahead and then left click the glass pane until we get basically its. Um, facing now this right here is going to be again a feature that's just kind of more for um, nicety I guess than real kind of functionality um, this right here is just going to be basically changing the properties here of these glass panes now it may take a little bit messing around with but with our debug stick and left clicking to we get selected in direction and it'll most likely say false because it will not be connected there we can right click it and it will actually extend toward our um, skeleton skull there which really helps kind of again create that shape there for the front armor now, um, again, it's not completely necessary, and it may take some messing around depending on the orientation of your vehicle. Um, but yeah, basically, it's something you can kind of mess around with and create a really nice look there for that uh, front uh, mantlet. After that, though, we're going to go ahead and then take our inner side walls. We're going to go back 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 on the side here. And over here, same thing. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. We can then, again, fill the inside in with stone blocks to completely close this off. So this, again, just going to be completely filled in. And we're going to go ahead and fill this in all the way to the back, except we're going to leave the middle space open like so on the last row. Now this uh, last block here, we want to go ahead and grab our chiseled stone brick, and we're just going to place that right there for the hatch, which would basically be designed for loading and basically, I, think, I believe, also discarding um, the shells uh, from the tank. And so that right there is going to conclude what we have there for layer number six. And at this point in time, we're going to be going ahead and moving into our final layers here which will be layers 7 and 8. So with that, let's go ahead and finish off the E100. So going ahead and moving into our final layers here, um, we have layers 7 and 8. For these layers to go ahead and get started with here, we're going to take stone slabs, we're going to place down 1, 2, 3 across the front there of the turret. We then want to place down a iron trap door, which will be coming off the middle stone slab like so. And we're going to go ahead and take our stone full blocks and place down a row of 3 across, followed by a stone stair to both sides, and then we're going to go and follow this up with a skeleton skull on the side there of those stairs. Once we have that done, we're going to take our stone blocks, we're going to place down a row of five going all the way across. This is going to be followed up with a second row of five. And then after that second row of five, we're going to go and then place down a row of two on both sides and then an inside wall there in the center. We're going to place down another row of five of stone across, then a second row of five, a third row. And then this uh, next row here is going to be an inside wall again in the center, two stone blocks on both sides. And then we're going to go and then place down a row of five of stone all the way across here again. We then want to take our light gray stainless panes, we're going to place down 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 light gray stainless panes, same thing over here, 8 glass panes on the side here. And we're also going to go ahead and just place down a row all the way across the back here, and also in the corners, just like that, to go ahead and uh, make the sides there of the turret. Now with that all done, up on top here, uh, to go ahead and get this build finished off, we're going to go ahead and start off by going ahead and grabbing our smooth sandstone uh, slabs here, or sorry, smooth stone slabs I should say. We're going to place down one and two like that on the top here. Now for our first one, or for our first kind of viewport here, we're going to place down an andesite wall here. And we're going to go and surround uh, these two sides here toward the back and sides with skeleton skulls around it. We then want to go ahead and grab ourselves a item frame. We're going to place down an item frame here, coming off that block. And in the item frame, we're going to place down a black bed like so, rotated so that the black is going upwards. Uh, and the pillow is kind of downwards. Then our next one is going to be right here in this location. We're going to place down our anisite wall. Same thing, item frame, black bed that's going to be rotated like so. And again, we're going to take our skeleton skulls and put them on these three sides there of the wall. We'll then take our stone buttons and we're just going to place down a stone button on top of uh, basically this stone block here and this right here. And on the back here, also two stone buttons in the corner, item frame in the, on the center block and in the item frame a stone block like that. And once we have that all done right there, that is going to basically complete what we have there for uh, layer 7 and 8. And that will complete my tutorial there for the E100 Super Heavy Tank. Um, I think this stone here definitely looks a lot better than the green. So I would definitely recommend and encourage doing the stone color. Obviously, you can do a camouflage if you really want to as well. Um, that's obviously something that wouldn't stop you. But yeah, really nice build. And uh, should, should be an awesome addition to any of your uh, worlds as a nice kind of... Um, alternate history um, kind of experimental Germany build. 
But with that, guys, thank you guys so much for watching this tutorial. If you do end up using this design, I do ask that you guys give me proper credit for this being linked from a sign of the build to my channel or this video if this does appear in social media sites. As long as you guys give me proper credit for the build, your freeze, if you're a project you guys are working on, overall enjoy the build, have fun for all that fun stuff. Um, in addition, again, the big special links to Patreon supporter Owen Bross for making this tutorial possible. And as always, feel free to check out my Patreon page. Link is always in my video descriptions. With that, though, um, thank you guys again so much for watching. As always, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. This has been Gary 2 4 and I'll see you guys next time.